Welcome to Johnny Stewart and Friends. Boy, have I got a friend here for you. I'm not kidding. I had to bail him out this morning. No, no, no. You, I guess you were already out. You're, you are not have doing anything good. to drink here, right? Johnny? I haven't had anything to drink yet, no. No, you don't have anything for a Oh, you, no, I don't have anything drink. to keep you happy. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that water's pretty good. We, we flavored it a little bit. Here next to me on my left is Mr. Kinky Friedman. Mr. Friedman has a tremendous history with unbelievable amount of exciting things that has happened in his life. Next to him is his friend TK. TK, what is your relationship here to Mr. Kinky Friedman? Friendship. 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 Well, that's a, you're a pretty good friend. And over there, Bob Brown, is that your friend also? Oh, Bob is definitely my friend. Bob's well, your friend. Where's the Yamaha you had? Yeah, yeah. I still he, got it. Okay. Yamaha. Okay, yeah. yeah. You put that. You, this is a cowboy show. Okay, they so ain't Bob Jews like Jesus anymore. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a song. You don't think he had a cowboy hat on at all? Never, I guess. Maybe. No, I'm talking about Jesus. <laughs> Jesus? Probably not. Well, I, you know, um, Jesus and Moses were uh, two good Jewish boys who got in a little trouble with the government, basically. Yeah. And um, they're both very important to me. <laughs> I like those boys. Well, I think they mainly either pulled or rode a donkey. Maybe a camel once in a while. Well, never forget, never forget. Jesus rode in on a jackass. Don't forget that. Okay. That's, that's All right. Thing. For some well, reason, Billy <laughs> Joe Shaver has reminded me of that every time I see him. Okay. Well, listen. Kinky is a songwriter. Here he is, a songwriter. He is also a singer, and he's also a novelist. Look at all these books he's written. All these books he's written. All these. This is his the praise for the kinkster. Okay. Kinky Friedman, Praise for the Kingster. This one here, Ten Little New Yorkers, another book here. And this one here says, uh, what's that say there? It's a big word, Johnny, armadillos. Armadillos, old lace. Armadillos and old lace. Oh, and old lace. Oh, yeah, and here, yeah. Okay, so you wrote these books, and over here we have more books that you've written. You've, you've been writing all the time. Well, that's a good one, the guide to Texas etiquette, uh, or this how here? to get to heaven. Texas etiquette? How to get to heaven or hell without going through Dallas-Fort Worth. Yeah. Wow, you, I didn't know you could get to heaven or hell you without can. going through. How to get to heaven or hell without going through Dallas Fort Worth. That's right. Okay, and this one here is Kinky Friedman, uh, Greenwich Killing Time. That's my first book. Yeah. That's your first Does that look book. Any different? Oh, yeah. look at this here. You're just as handsome. I, I think you're just as handsome there. Now, um, you know my full Christian name is Richard Kinky Big Dick Friedman. Richard Kinky Kinky Big Dick. Big Dick Friedman. Freedom. That's your Christian Free, name? Freeman. Freedman. Oh, that's Freedman. my full Christian that's your, name. Okay. That's right. Well, there was Peter, James, and John, so that's close. Right. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. Here. It shows off to kind of a rocky start, John. Hey, we're, uh, we're working here. We're, we're getting, getting going we're here. Warmed up. Okay. Right. What would Kinky do here? Here's what would Kinky do here? Well, these are a lot of beautiful books that you've written, and you've done lots of... Uh, things with other people. You've worked with lots of stars. you worked with Willie Nelson or got to know Willie Nelson and work with him. Well, uh, Willie's my shrink, pretty much. And, he's your shrink. And, and by that I mean he's given me some wonderful advice over the years. And um, Did he take any of that advice himself? No. Well, it works for Willie, the, the yeah. advice. It doesn't always work for others. Um, <laughs> one night uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning this past year, this year, uh, Willie called me um, at the ranch, he was in Hawaii, and uh, I was watching Matlock. Oh. At three o'clock in the morning, and Willie says, "What are you, Kinky? What are you doing?" I said, "I'm watching Matlock," and he says, "Well, that's a sure sign of depression. Turn Matlock off. Turn him off, and start writing, Kinky." So I, I hadn't written a song in 40 years at that time. Oh my gosh! And and so I started. I, I was inspired, kind of, and I. I wrote about 13 or 14 songs in a very short period of time, which will all be, uh, they're on the new album called Spitfire, which will be coming out this coming year. Okay, so you have a brand new album That's called right. Spitfire. Now, the, can they find out how to get that if they go uh, out and kinky Friedman on the uh, internet? Uh, they can't get it yet. We're, we're very close. But they'll to find it. out about you and maybe yeah. when that's coming out, right? And I'm predicting a song that Willie's gonna, going to record called Jesus in Pajamas. We don't have it here. Jesus it. in Pajamas. That's right. Okay. But, but there's uh, 13 songs on, on that record, Spitfire. And anyway, so so when I finished, I called Willie and I said, you know, I was in this burst of energy and I said, Willie, I finished these songs. And he said, well, send them to me. Send them. And then he said, um, by the way, Kinky, 
What channel is Matlock on? <laughs> <laughs> Did that take care of it? That, it's about a wrap on that one, yeah. But, <laughs> but also, uh, when I ran for governor of Texas uh, in 2006. 2006, you ran for governor of Texas. I heard you also ran for a justice of the peace. That was many hours ago, back when Christ was a cowboy. We're talking about 2006 now. Yeah, not too long ago. And that race for governor was a race I won every place but Texas, <laughs> unfortunately. And, uh, and Willie gave us a lot of campaign slogans. One of them was, criticize them all you want, just don't circumcise them anymore. <laughs> but um, Willie also told me, if you fail at something long enough, you become a legend. So I've failed at politics for some length of time. And in fact, my definition of politics, poly means more than one, and ticks are blood-sucking parasites. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> okay, so we've done all these things, and uh, how did you get the name Kinky? They would like to know, how did you get that name? Well, I got it um, in college from uh, Nick Chinga Chabon, uh, my roommate there, and I, uh, at that time, had kind of a Angela Davis uh, hairdo I no longer have. But uh, maybe, can I try that Yamaha in my head, the one you're wearing? Sure, you want to. Now, Bob Dylan once did that did he? On when we were on the uh, Jewish telethon. You look like a Jew. I feel like a Jew. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you something. I was kind of supporting Bernie for uh, president because I felt it would be, if he won, it would have been a milestone in Jewish history because it would be the first time a Jewish family ever moved into a place a black family had moved out of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Is this an X rated show? Yeah, you forgot to yeah it's going to be. It's yeah. going to be. Okay. Okay. So. Then, of course. Um, you stayed at the White House. You stayed there with George Bush, and you also stayed there with Clinton. With Bill Clinton. With yeah. Bill Clinton. Yeah. And it, it was at that point with Bill Clinton that I gave him a Cuban cigar. And I told him, remember, Mr. President, we're not supporting their economy, we're burning their fields. <laughs> for cigars. He never did smoke that thing. He used it for something else, I think. Well, the timing was probably about right. right. Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> timing was good. Okay, but you've, you've worked for... So we're going to play a video so the audience can see some of what's going on here. The first video we're coming up is uh, Mr. P, a song that means a lot to you. It means a dog in the sky. Mr. P was a beautiful dog that you had and you loved him. Him? Him. Him. It was Peanut, but short was called Mr. P. Always called Mr. P. Mr. P. And, and Mr. you P. wrote a song. And yeah. we're going to play a, a video of that right now. Is that okay with you? That would be great. Okay. Go ahead, Scott. Hello, Facebook friends. Uh, I'd like to play a song that I wrote very recently for uh, my dog, who, uh, my beloved dog, Mr. P, who disappeared uh, several weeks ago. And um, also sending it out to, to the people at uh, Austin Pets Alive, who are a terrific outfit, and they are opening the gates of heaven a little bit wider, I believe. Uh, this is called A Dog in the Sky. Goodbye, Mr. P. You meant the world to me. But you can't keep an old dog from running off to die. Goodbye, Mr. P. It was always you and me. Now you are my dog in the sky. Now you're safe, my little friend, until we meet again. Across the bridge where skies are always blue, I believe that when we die, there's a dog up in the sky. And I believe, my precious one, that dog is you. You 
could scarcely see Now my little There's one thing I know It ain't the pot of gold No, Mr. P It's the rainbow You couldn't hear You could scarcely see Now my little you Mr. P wherever you are and everybody else as well of course and may the God of your choice bless you Well, listen, that's actually a very sentimental song. For a minute now, I'm going to keep my little funny side laid down here. Yeah, right you right told on. me personally that that Mr. P dog meant a lot to you and that you actually for over 20 years have been excited about helping and sheltering and, and right. taking care of animals. And right now you're working at something uh, in Austin, Texas. Explain that where you have about 14 dogs that you're trying to rescue and, and bring out and explain to our audience that. We have run a rescue ranch uh, for 20 years that we've saved thousands of animals. With thousands of animals over 20 years but and it's a rescue ranch. But we're all getting older and uh, we're, we're, we will be closing our doors uh, at the end of this year. And these people, Austin Pets Alive, took in thousands of dogs during uh, Hurricane Harvey. Hurricane and, Harvey, that was a big yeah, bad big, thing. And, and were you in the middle of that? Uh, we were not. The Hill Country was spared, actually. Okay. So, but um, they uh, are taking in the, the dogs that we still have not adopted. So there's 14 left, and they're being moved to, uh, to Austin Pets Alive. And it's it just a, it's a great outfit. Anybody um, who cares about uh, animals, I think, there's, I think being a defender of strays is a real important thing. And uh, a lot of us feel that way, obviously, because the uh, that Facebook version of the song, A Dog in the Sky, has now reached over 100,000 people. That's awesome. Awesome. And you wrote that song. Yeah. In memory of? Mr. P. Mr. P. Right. And that's an awesome thing. And this, what you're doing with the rescue center and, and the sheltering and helping animals is, is a big thing. And it's a big mission of yours. That's something mm -hmm. that means a lot to you. Right? It, it is. Um, it's really great work uh, doing something like that, and um, I um, I think it is opening the gates of heaven a little bit wider. You yeah. Know? Everybody would like to be something they're not. If I could do things over, I think I'd like to be a paramedic, you know, or be a teacher of some kind. We're all drawn to occupations we're hideously ill-suited for, Johnny. Right. Like I've, I've always been ambivalent about being a country singer and. And I've come to realize anybody who uses the word ambivalent probably should not have become a country singer in the first place. <laughs> is Willie Nelson uh, kind of the main country singer that you've associated with? I know you also did some stuff with Freddie Fender, uh, Johnny Paycheck. Uh, uh, they're great ones. You know, great I've ones. done some quite a 
some pretty good things with uh, Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers and so forth. I guess you ran across those people as well. Yeah, but Willie really is the hillbilly Dalai Lama, you know. He is, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he, he is a, a great one. And in fact, I have five very brief uh, Willie Nelson medical jokes uh, that I, I put into a montage. It moves very quickly. I think I could try to run them now. I'd like to have some uh, Mexican mouthwash, a little bit of tequila, but we don't have it, do we? We don't have it here, no. What we I don't. call the Barry Manilow drink because it makes you feel good for a short period of time. Yeah, for a short <laughs> period. Don't. Listen, uh, what is about... You want to hear the Willie Nelson medical jokes? Well, yes, can, I would. I can get them fast. We're ready. Willie Nelson jokes. But I need a shot of Mexican mouthwash to really but move this, it along. Dead second. That's not it. That's not going to get it. You don't you know, think this will do it? No. I just did that. I just blessed it with I Mexican mouthwash. Good. Watch it. Don't, don't fall over. That's a big. Oh my gosh, that's a big la, swallow. Hoo la la hoo la. Okay. All right. Willie Nelson jokes. Guy goes to a doctor, and the doctor says, um, "I got bad news for you. You've got AIDS, and you've got Alzheimer's." And the guy says, "Well, at least I don't have AIDS." <laughs> <laughs> I like that. A guy That's goes good. to a doctor. Second joke. A guy goes to a doctor, and the doctor says, "I got bad news for you. You got six months to live." The guy takes out a gun and he shoots the doctor right there in his office. I gave him twenty years. Oh, so twenty years <laughs> instead I mean, of six 20. months. That's why he did it. I like a that. Woman goes to a gynecologist, and uh, he says, "No sex for you for uh, for six weeks. No sex." And uh, she goes home and tells her husband, her husband says, why? And uh, she says, because the doctor says so. And the husband says, what does the dentist say? <laughs> <laughs> so far. Uh, a woman goes to a doctor, and he, he gives her the complete medical examination, and afterwards she comes up to him, she says, doctor, with all due respect, I, I really have to ask you, was it really necessary to spend 45 minutes on the vaginal portion of this examination. And he says, lady, who's the chiropractor here? Me or you? <laughs> chiropractor. <laughs> That's four of them. <laughs> well, one last one. A woman goes to a doctor and uh, for a breast exam, and he says, look, this could be a bit painful. Would you like me to numb them for you? She says, sure. And uh, he goes, nom, 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 nom,
amazing grace sort of passed you by. You wake up every day and you start to cry. You want to die, but you just can't quit. Let me break it on down. It's the fucked up shit. Okay, now, you didn't write that song. That's a great right? Joe Cerati on uh, guitar. On that, yeah, by the way. he is good. One Very of the good. Jersey boys. Yeah. Um, no, Warren Zevon did. Did you cut a record of that song? Yes. You did? It's All right, this is it right here. Yeah. Here it is, right here. All these are on here too, huh? All these songs? All right. Okay, that one was called... What the, am I the the light of lighting this booger in here? Whatever. You can light it if you want. Can John, that's great. That's, yeah, light it. You're a good American. Yeah. I appreciate it. Light my hair at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that way I get. Ah! <laughs> I okay. like it here. <laughs> Be my friend. Okay. <laughs> so the, it's called The Loneliest Man I Ever Met. Mm -hmm. Okay. On that CD, he also sings I Was Born Under Wondering Star. And that is one of my favorite, favorite. I was born nice. under wandering star. He has Bloody Mary morning. What's the name of the guy that did? Uh, come on, the sang it originally uh, from Painter Wagon. Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. I strive to be like Lee. You don't even know who that is. Do you? No. Oh, you got to see Painter Wagon, Lee Marvin. Well, Lee Girl Marvin, from North Count Country, wandering star. A nightingale sang in Berkeley Square. Berkeley Square. Berkeley. Berkeley. It's in Berkeley. But it's pronounced Berkeley. Oh, it is. Okay. It's a little bit of spiritual trivia for you, John. Pickin' Time, Hungry Eyes, Wild Man from Borino. Bur Bur Borneo. Borneo. Yeah. Freedom to Stay. Uh, that's amazing. All those wild songs. And how long ago was this? And who wrote Pickin' Time? Who wrote what? Who recorded Let Pickin' Time? Who was a uh, hit? Pick Where's it at? It's an old Johnny Cash song. Yeah, oh, Johnny, Johnny Cash. Yeah. Pick and time. Johnny Cash right here. Merle Haggard. Yeah. Oh, you, you sang big songs from a lot of big guys, yeah. didn't you? Uh, amazing, beautiful. Keep okay. friends with Merle. All right. What? You were friends with Merle. Was Merle, friends. Was a, yeah. Merle was a great one. Good okay. Of mine too. So then I'll use this if you need to use something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 don't do it. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. And then what's this other one? Uh, resurrected. Okay. It's a limited collector's edition, darling. A limited <laughs> collector's edition. Sister Sarah. Jesus in pajamas. Well, we got me. Jesus in pajamas if you want. Kiki play Friedman. Without a video. Yeah. We we don't have a video yet. We'll just see. Oh, a no, dog named time. Freedom. Is that a different one about Peanut? A dog named Freedom. Yes, it is. That's a different one. Yeah. A dog okay. named Freedom is uh, is a good one, but we don't have. Uh, yeah, no, but we have. All right. Okay. So you have all those amazing things That's coming out in the, the forthcoming year and this new year. And you're still you're still out there. Mingling with all these people and well, doing it's all funny the when they're writing a biography of yeah. you. And, and by the way, there's something about the, the biography, uh, which is um, the life and times of Kinky Friedman, is uh, selling out apparently. Yeah. It's doing really well. You can't order it. Amazon's already sold out. Is and, that and one of these here? No. No, no this these is brand new. Early. And, and this biography uh, by Mary Lou Sullivan, who also did the book on Johnny Winter, which okay. did very well apparently about seven years ago, this thing was out. But this is this book. Uh, kind of like you're expecting something funny maybe and there's a lot of funny stuff in here but you get the idea that with songs like they ain't making Jews like Jesus anymore and <laughs> proud to be an a-hole from El Paso and get your biscuits and love and your buns in the bed and so forth <laughs> we really thought that we could make it commercially with this stuff this is back in 19 early 70s and uh, there were some very ugly experiences that the Jew boys went through and I would just say the biography just shocked me how how interesting it was. Well, it's just a, it, a lot of young people today don't know this stuff. It's just, you know they 
And I think the book is selling very well to those kind of people. They don't even know who Abby Hoffman is. Well, they don't yeah. know Abby Hoffman. They don't know. A yeah. lot of people don't know who Abby is today, maybe. But uh, Ira Hayes is another guy, which we're going to have a video of the one of the uh, the Native American who raised the flag after the Battle of Iwo Jima. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you weren't there, Bob. No, you weren't there. I missed that one. Yeah. Well, Bob, am I, do I have your Yamaha? I think I do. Yeah. yeah. A Yamaka? Yeah, thank you. Well, you can borrow it anytime you want. And the last guy that wore a Yamaha with a cowboy hat over it was uh, Bob Dylan. That's right. When we did the, uh, it, it was a Orthodox Jewish telephone. That's you did a lot of Angeles. stuff with Bob Dylan, didn't you? We did. I did the tour with him of the Rolling Thunder Review. So. I'm an Orthodox Jew. You are? Yep. Well, by God. <laughs> now you know too. <laughs> you Orthodox. Uh, I'm, I'm, they asked me if I'm a practicing Jew. I, I doubt it. I said, well, if I am, I need to practice a little bit more because, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, Jews are, um, we keep stirring the pot. That's the most important thing we can do is, yeah. that's I'm a, right. I'm a big backer of Israel and, uh, and I big, and I like, uh, what Trump is doing. Yeah. You know, I like what he's doing very much. TK, tell yes. us how you met our friend here, uh, Kinky and what your relationship is. I met, Kinky. Too deep I, I met Kinky back in 1986. Very shallow relationship. I was in the uh, uh, Quartet Radio Station in Kerrville, and he was running for Justice of the Peace, and I was doing his campaign spot. Yeah, and he was running for Justice of the Peace. That's correct. In Kerrville. And I was also then in charge of the uh, Wrangler True Value talent show for the Kerr County Festival. And Kinky was kind enough to be one of my judges. Did you think he was a pretty colorful character? I had no idea who he was, except that he was running for JP. And everybody kept coming into my office and they said, You got Kinky Friedman as one of our judges? And I said, Yes. You know, he's running for JP. And they go, Do you know who Kinky Friedman is? And I go, No, I don't. I said, I just know he's running for JP. And did they say, Well, it's all fucked up? They said, No. <laughs> they, they, they told me some wonderful things about him. And from that moment on, uh, you talk about one of the biggest hearts. Kinky has a big, big Listen, heart. You told me you didn't send the alimony to check, though. No, he doesn't. He's never been married. Oh, oh, but since one a time, one a time crunch, and I just want to get now his we got time. Johnny, I want to show you something about this, this deal here. Okay, tell us about your necklace there, right there. Yeah. This is a, uh, a necklace I've been wearing for about 25 years. Do you know what this means? Yeah, you told me. But oh, I told you. All right. Sorry. Tell uh, me. All right. Uh, I've been wearing it for about 25 years, so I went to a Willie show a few about a month ago. Willie Nelson in um, uh, Helotus, Texas, and uh, John and Johnny uh, Rodriguez, John, John T. Flores oh, John. Country Store. All right, shotgun Willie time. Anyway, so I was wearing this. I met some Indians here uh, at, at the show, and um, it's okay to think you're a cowboy, you know, until you run into somebody who thinks he's an Indian. So I met these guys, <laughs> and I said, "Do you?" Kinky, do you know what this means? And I said, no, but I've been wearing it about 25 years. I don't know what it means. And they said it means available Indian woman. Oh, available Indian woman. I said, and, I can handle that. I said, did you sorry. go right out and get a sex change? I did not have spare change for a sex change. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but this means available it's, Indian woman. That's what it means. So I'm, normally the woman. I'm going to wear the damn thing. I'm going to keep wearing it because. Well, uh, I just thought it was a horseshoe and it meant good luck. Not good all, luck. Not at all. No. Okay. Well, but are you available? That's a. Is, is he married? No. He's Kinky's not married? Kinky's not married. No. Kinky's not married. I thought you said I'm not married. So it's, and, it's, and, and my name, the T stands for Tawana, so I can put that on. Yeah, you, you know, could put it on. Could, I got into, yes. Well, you got a one. That means available Indian man. <laughs> I know that one. And it fits in. Well, 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 yeah, what, I'm not going to uh, say anything. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we did talk about the Bob Dylan book, right? Because we should mention that. Well, uh, yeah, mention the Bob Dylan book now to make the, sure we the, did. The fact is that uh, there are, uh, I, what I really thought was lately is that the, what the world really needs is another Bob Dylan book. Of I mean, course. There's about 300 of them out there. No. But none of them have these uh, these stories from my friend Louis Kemp. This is really Louis's book. It's his stories, and I'm writing it with him. But uh, it's called uh, The Adventures of Bobby and Louie. Adventures of Bobby and Louie. You have a show, you have a song like that, don't you? No. No, just That's the book next. is. That's the book. Next. But the book's coming out this coming year on, uh, it will be with Random House. And the stories are amazing. And when you read this stuff, you say, I can't believe 
that none of the other biographies know this stuff because Louis was and the are you only the ones that in. are you the one that assembled all this stuff and no, put no, the book out? No, no, they're Louis stories. Only Louis. He's the only guy, you know, that was with Bob when this stuff mm -hmm. went down, and. Uh, and it, it, it's fun, and it, it's it kind of a little bit like Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. They're adventurers, they're uh, troublemakers, mm -hmm. and this gets starting with when they were 10 years old, when they met at summer camp, on through as a teenager through Minneapolis, St. Paul, and uh, and then later on, and, and Louis produced the whole Rolling Thunder Review thing. So there, no one knows these stories but Louis, and and I think Bob, I think Bob is really going to like this if he likes it. It's good. I mean, if he hates it, it's, it's even better. Himself. It's better. Yeah. <laughs> but but this book will be a financial pleasure uh, for Louis and the King. Who wrote the book? Louis and me. You and Louis yeah. wrote the book. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's good. I mean, they're his stories. I mean, they're unique. Right now, we're going to look at a video called "Sold American." Okay. Is that good? Yeah. You like that one? That's okay. one of my songs that Glenn Campbell recorded. Okay. Glenn Campbell originally recorded it? Yeah. And I was with Carl Jackson a few weeks ago that worked with uh, Glenn. It's now producing. Well, that's awesome. Okay, Sold American. Here we go. Played a jaded fallen cowboy star. Pawn shops itching for your old guitar. Where are you going? Ain't nobody knows Sequins have fallen from your clothes Once you heard the Opry crowd applaud Now you're hanging out at Fourth and Broad On a rain-wept sidewalk remembering the time when coffee with a friend was still a dime And everything's been sold American The early times is finished And the want ads all are red Everyone's been sold American Been dreaming dreams in a Some window in the frost, roulette eyes reflecting another morning lost. Hauled in by the metro for killing time and pain, with a singing brakeman screaming through your veins. Pictures of the children and your wife. Now they're fumbling through your wallet and they're trying to find your name. It's almost like they raise the price of fame. Well, that was a beautiful song. Beautiful song. That was done what last summer, last December. You did that one last week. Last week. Last week. I didn't think it was very old. Okay. Well, you were good looking then, I and really you're good looking now. Like it's okay. You wear much now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not an unattractive young man. I know that. Well, you were you were very attractive, and you still are. Let's put put that down in the book. Okay. So you've done all these great things. What's the most exciting thing 
that a guy like Kinky Friedman has done? What's the most exciting thing you've done? Well, I would say it's probably um, sleeping at the White House under two presidents. Was you know, I was going to say that, but I didn't want to say it yet because you would have rather done. been uh, Donald Trump, right? Uh, no, but I, I, I like what, he, what he's doing. Uh, you know, he wrote in on a jackass, Trump did, and there is a chance. Uh, when I was in Europe uh, last year, uh, when the election, before the election, uh, the Europeans, every place where we did a tour there, and every place we went, they said, aren't you afraid of Donald Trump? Aren't you afraid of Trump? You should, aren't you concerned? Aren't you afraid? And I said, you know, you people, you people have a pretty bad track record when it comes to knowing who you should be afraid of. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, actually, and, uh, you said he rode in on a jackass. Now he's chasing all the jackasses out. <laughs> well, he, he, draining I, the I swamp. Think there's, draining the swamp. There is a chance that uh, someone like Trump, who I've, I've never cared for, but I mean, he's not a hero of mine. But I think. But he's becoming one, maybe. He has the ability to change in office. And the ironic thing about Obama was he ran as the agent of change. And he was incapable of changing himself. Right. He could not change. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's uh, that's why uh, you know what he'll probably be known for is he's the guy who was taking selfies uh, at Nelson Mandela's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think of him. Yeah, true that's story. True. That's he true. was doing. He was. Yeah, he was just exactly. laughing. He was having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, at least our, our country is under a lot of stress and a lot of things, but at least it appears to me that he's not afraid to go up to bat and swing and see what he can possibly do out of it to help us all have a home run in life. You agree? Yeah, and, and I'm not a fan of people who put their names up on a hammered steel, you know, like Trump has done it. But he's a guy who has spent his whole life as an aristocrat. He's not an aristocrat, but he was a guy who's like a, bragging about his golf courses or he's in the country club. You know, he can't help that. He had his own and you've got to remember that, that Winston Churchill, maybe the greatest man of the whole century, mm -hmm. and, and uh, FDR, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, those two were aristocrats too. Yeah, I mean, Mother Frank, Teresa was an aristocrat. Franklin Delano um, Gandhi was. Yes. Now, Gandhi was a, a yuppie lawyer in mm -hmm. London, you know, very westernized. It wasn't until he was in prison in South Africa that he really became Gandhi. So um, I, th I think there is a way that if we can change and if we can understand that a man like Trump, who I never, I, I, I don't love a guy who puts his name on the wall of a, of a children's hospital when he gives them a million bucks. That's what Trump has done his whole damn life. I like Mr. Anonymous, but I think Trump is changing. I think there is, could be greatness in, in all of us, you know. I mean, I look at a guy like myself. I'm. I'm a serious guy. Nobody takes seriously, yeah. <laughs> as, as as Billy Joe Shaver wrote wrote a song about. And um, what's your next what's your next big event? That I'm probably going to slash my wrist before I get to the big town. No, that's what Willie says. Don't slash your wrist before yeah. you get to the next big right. town. That's what the that's the purpose of Willie life. Willie was just here last week. And that's right. Falling on your face is still moving forward. That's right. That's <laughs> it. You're doing it. Well. What's the most exciting book you've written that you like? No. Always the next one. Always the next I'll one. I'll tell you the title of the next one. The book is finished. It, it will be out this year, and it is called The Tin Can Telephone. It's a mystery novel. The Tin Can Telephone? <laughs> yeah. But the big book, I believe, is going to be The Adventures of Bobby and Louie, the Bob Dylan book. Wow. Because wow. Uh, Bob is, you know, he's reinvented himself again. He's happening. And it'll be a worldwide hit before it's even. Out. Are most of your books in subject matter about something and somebody, and it it has a, a certain amount of truth to all of them? Uh, yeah, yeah. They're they're basically. I've always said there's a fine line between fiction and nonfiction, and I believe Jimmy Buffett and I snorted it in 1973. Mm -hmm. So were you close to Jimmy Buffett too? Yeah, he's a pal. He helped a lot when we ran for uh, the race for governor. That's right. I made a deal with him where uh, he could, uh, he wanted to have the town Port Aransas for uh -huh. his involvement with the governor's race. Uh huh. And we made the deal, but I didn't win, so I didn't have to deliver. <laughs> that was the What's the most exciting thing you know about Kinky, TK? Oh, what oh, is it? That I know. Um, 
Well, why, why are you I here can, with him? Why is he still your friend? I can friend? tell you why we're still friends, because um, I was uh, friends with uh, Miss uh, Texas, 1987, uh, Joe Thompson. My best uh, friend. We were best friends. Yeah. And, and of course, I was Miss Texas in 1967. So <laughs> Joe, Tom, Joe, Joe and I had a Joe lot was, in common. She was Miss Texas in 1987, top 10 in Miss America, uh -huh. uh, which Miss America is a nonprofit organization. And they. Uh, and he was friends with both of you. Yeah. Right. And Joe and I will always love each other, speaking for myself. Anyway, but I think so, yeah. But, I do believe that. Uh, we've always just been friends. Uh, it's just one of those. Since you met him as a, like a campaign manager, so to speak, with the Justice of the Peace. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't his campaign manager. I was just basically someone that wrote his. Uh, his spots at that particular time mm -hmm. and put it on air and then we just like I said we just became friends throughout he uh, was the uh, master ceremonies for the orange car ball that we had in um, Houston, Texas and he's just always been there. There's not a living soul in the universe who cares about that. Well, they do in Houston, well, but they anyway. Don't, they don't care. This is an ADD culture. We forget this stuff as soon as we see it. So who wrote the Ballad of Ira Hayes? The Ballad of Ira Hayes. We're going to play that next. Yeah, that was written by Peter Lafarge, who was a Native American who killed himself months after he wrote the song in New York City. And uh, it's Johnny Cash did a version of it. Uh, this is a better version because this incorporates the the melody line. Johnny Cash did kind of, he did the, the way Peter Lafarge originally wrote it, which was call him drunk, you know, kind of it's Kinky, kind of, who is Ira Hayes? Ira Hayes was the Native American who helped raise the flag after the Battle of Iwo Jima so that's true? in World War II. Yeah, that's true. Wow. This is a song about him. And I don't know, Johnny, if you know the Native American Thanksgiving prayer. If I you, do not. If you don't know it, it goes like this. Thanks for nothing. Okay. <laughs> That's it? That's it. The whole prayer. Thanks for nothing. Okay. And here's a song. It's a true story about what happened to Ira Hayes. Ira Hayes. Go, Go ahead, ahead, Scott. Roll this booger. Here's a story about uh, one of my favorite American heroes. He was a Native American named Ira Hayes. He was one of the men who helped raise the flag after the Battle of Iwo Jima in the Pacific Theater of World War II. And if you don't know the Native American Thanksgiving prayer, it goes like this, thanks for nothing. Ballad of Ira Hayes. Gather round me, people, a story I will tell. About a brave young Indian lad you should remember well. From a tribe of Pima Indians, a proud and peaceful band. They farmed the Phoenix Valley out in Arizona land. Down their ditches for a thousand years the sparkling water rushed till a white man stole their water rights and the running water hushed. Ira's folks was hungry, their fields grew thick with weeds. But when war came, Ira volunteered and forgot the white man's greed. Call him drunk in Ira Hayes He won't answer anymore Not that whiskey drinking Indian Or Marine who went to war Well, they battled up Iwo Jima Hill 250 men Ah, but only 27 lived walk back down again and after the fight was over an old glory proudly raised among the men who held her high was an Indian Ira Hayes 
Call him drunk in Ira Hayes. He won't answer anymore. Not that whiskey drinking Indian or Marine who went to war. Well, Ira Hayes returned a hero, celebrated throughout the land. He was whined and speeched and honored. Hell, everybody shook his hand. But it's just a Pima Indian, no food, no friend, no chance. And back home, nobody cared what Ira had did. And when do the Indians dance? Well, Ira took to drinking hard. Jail often was his home. They used to let him raise the flag there and lower it, just like you'd throw a dog a bone. And Ira died drunk early one morning. All alone in the land he'd fought to save. Two inches of water in a lonely ditch was a grave for Ira Hayes. Call him drunk in Ira Hayes. He won't answer anymore. Not that whiskey drinking Indian or Marine went to war. Call him drunken Ira Hayes, but his land is still as dry, and his ghost, well, it's lying there thirsty in the ditch where Ira died. Call him drunken Ira Hayes, he won't answer anymore. Not that whiskey drinking Indian or Marine who went to war. Uh, listen, I'm telling you that you you have a lot of emotion when you sing these songs. You're into it. That's right. You know, no, that's what. And uh, this this next song was because of a lot of emotion, because of your dog, Mr. P. Yeah. And we want to play that again if we can for these people, because it meant so much to you. And at the end of this, it tells you where you can send in donation to help with this rescue center or that adopt, you're working. Or adopt or and foster a dog. Adopt a whatever. dog, whatever you want to do. But he loves helping animals and helping things. And we can see that as a songwriter and as a, uh, a novelist and also a singer, that you've just had a lot of fun in your life and you've donated a lot of time and energy for lots of good things. And a lot of your things seem to have a message in it, your books and everything. If you really look at it, there's a big message there. And I think the message is, it ain't the pot of gold, it's the rainbow. It's the rainbow. <laughs> and I read one thing, and, you, and when I looked you up on the internet, you know, it said that uh, if you really want to be successful and you live a long life, you have to what? Yeah, well, you need uh, Lauren McCall's advice is good health and a bad memory. Bad, good health and a bad memory, and you said in most circumstances, oh, oh, yeah, make sure. Oh, yeah, you've got to be a little more of an asshole. you got to be an asshole. <laughs> if you want to live longer. Right, I didn't say it. He but, said it. Right. Yeah, Look it. You'll live longer. But uh, remember, um, um, <laughs> What is the word that means, um, you know, living a long time? Uh, come on, somebody longevity? knows. Longevity? Longevity, but... Uh, Lucky. Forever. No. Lucky? <laughs> anyway, we're going to play this song real quick. We only have a few more minutes, so we're going to play this song. And may the Lord take a liking to may you, May the Lord Tony. take a liking to you, and here we're going to have the Lord take a liking to Mr. P, the song he wrote for his dog. Hello, Facebook friends. Uh, I'd like to play a 
song that I wrote very recently for uh, my dog, who, uh, my beloved dog, Mr. P, who disappeared uh, several weeks ago. And um, also sending it out to, to the people at uh, Austin Pets Alive, who are a terrific outfit. And they are opening the gates of heaven a little bit wider, I believe. Uh, this is called A Dog in the Sky. Goodbye, Mr. P. You meant the world to me. But you can't keep an old dog from running off to die. Goodbye, Mr. P. It was always you and me. Now you are my dog in the sky. Now you're safe, my little friend, until we meet again. Across the bridge where skies are always blue, I believe that when we die, there's a dog up in the sky. And I believe, my precious one, that dog is you. You could scarcely see Now my little old man is free 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 oh, I'm an old man myself All my dreams are on the shelf But you can't keep an old dog from But there's one thing I know It ain't the pot of gold No, Mr. P It's the rainbow You couldn't hear You could scarcely see God bless you, Mr. P, wherever you are, and everybody else as well, of course. And may the God of your choice bless you. Well, we have had a great show here with a great spirit, a great man, and he's done lots of great things. This is him right here. Okay, this is a picture of him. Shot, yeah. yeah, that's an attractive <laughs> shot. That's Mr. Chris Morris did this of you. But anyway, you're going to sign this for me, sure, right? Sure, sure. And I'm going to put a frame on this, and we'd like to say goodbye to all of you. Mr. Bob Brown down there. Yep. And TK, you've been a friend of his a long time, and now I'm a friend of his. And I'm going to shake his hand, and we're going to say goodbye to all you people while he signs this. Take care. Have a great new year. We love you all and thank you for watching. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.